So what's the big idea? Well, the big idea is your central nervous system. Your central nervous system is made up of your brain and spinal cord and is continually monitoring and coordinating every single function in your body. If you think of the brain as a central computer that controls and coordinates all the functions of your body, then the nervous system is like a communication network that relays messages back and forth from the brain to different parts of the body via the spinal cord. The spinal cord is a long bundle of nerve tissue which extends from the lower part of your brain down through your spinal column. Along the way, smaller braids branch off from the cord and pass out from the spine between each of the movable vertebrae. These braids divide again and again into tiny nerve fibres and fill the entire body, going to each cell, organ and tissue. Every human has an estimated 15 billion nerve cells, sending and receiving messages through the spinal cord. Now our nervous system is extremely delicate, so what protects it? Our spine. This is what a normal healthy spine looks like. It has 24 movable vertebrae, each working with the one above and below it. A disc separates the vertebrae and acts like a shock absorber and a spacer for the nerve. So why is a healthy spine so important? Well, it protects the spinal cord and the delicate nerve tissue and allows us to bend, flex, twist and move freely without compromising the nerves. If the spine is not moving freely, it's referred to as a vertebral subluxation complex, or for short, a subluxation. Is that right? Subluxation. Is there, a, is there another word we can, we can use for that? No? Okay. This is when two or more vertebrae have lost their normal motion and or position. This can cause interruption to the normal nerve flow and interfere with the communication from the brain to the body and from the body back to the brain. Research at the University of Colorado found that it only took between 8 to 10 millimetres of mercury pressure to reduce the nerve supply by up to 60%. That's about the weight of a small coin. Compression can exist without pain. So that means where the nerve goes to can be robbed of up to 60% of its nerve supply and you may not even feel it. This is what is referred to as a silent subluxation. So what happens when you have a subluxation? That area can start to degenerate in as little as two weeks. This degeneration causes scar tissue to develop, which leads to more scar tissue. This degenerative process can continue as long as the immobilization is present, and this type of degeneration is preventable. Spinal degeneration has nothing to do with how old you are. You can be 60 years old and have a perfectly healthy spine. Or you can be 10 and have a spine that's already showing signs of degeneration. It all depends on how and when the subluxation occurred. If the nerve supply to anywhere in the body is disturbed, it can eventually lead to a symptom. Symptoms are the only way for your body to let you know that something's wrong. So let's go back to the same spine again. If you have nerve interference in the cervical spine, it can lead to headaches, migraines, lowered immune system, sinus troubles, hay fever, abnormal sleep patterns, eczema, hearing loss, tonsillitis, chronic cough, croup, pins and needles into the arms and hands. In the thoracic spine, asthma, functional heart problems, bronchitis, influenza, gallbladder troubles, liver conditions, blood pressure problems, indigestion, heartburn, gastritis, lowered immunity, allergies, kidney troubles, chronic tiredness. In the lower back, constipation, menstrual problems, bedwetting, knee problems, sciatica, backache, poor circulation, swollen ankles, weakness into legs and cramping. Wow, I'm out of breath. And that's naming only a few. Did you know that less than 10% of your nervous system perceives pain? So quite often, by the time pain and symptoms appear, the nerve interference could have been present for months or even years. Think about when a person has a heart attack or a stroke. They don't actually feel the arteries blocking up and usually don't know anything's wrong until it's too late. Painkillers and anti-inflammatories can cover up the symptoms, but they don't get to the cause of the problem. By masking these symptoms, it allows the problem to continue to develop silently until there's a major health crisis. We all know about the damaging side effects that can occur from long-term drug use. So why continue filling your body with drugs to hide the cause of the problem? Now you might be wondering what causes subluxations to occur. Gardening, sports, computer work, pregnancy, improper lifting, 
arguments, food additives, chemicals, birth, poor posture, to name but a few. There can also be mental causes, such as stress. The average five-year-old has had approximately 2,000 falls, of which 200 are considered serious. But usually an isolated event alone is not to blame. It's an accumulation of many of life's little incidents and accidents. Recent research has found that in births that required intervention by a doctor, which means they used forceps, suction or excessive force, 95% had upper neck injuries. So it's a smart decision to have your child assessed at an early age. So the chiropractor's job is to locate and correct spinal interference so your nervous system can perform at its own optimal level. Remember, the immobilised area will degenerate at a faster rate than the area with good balance and movement. Fortunately, with the right care and by mobilising these areas and creating good alignment, the body can begin to slow, stabilise or reverse the degenerative process. Chiropractors assist the healing process by re-establishing the nerve flow to its optimum level. This allows the proper communication between the brain and the body. Chiropractors don't treat the symptoms. Rather, they remove the nerve interference, which allows the body to do what it does best, heal itself. When you get a cut or a broken bone, who heals it? Your body does. All forms of the healing arts have their place. And let's face it, medicine has an important role to play in crisis and emergency care. And in these situations, can be life-saving. On the other hand, chiropractic is vital in keeping your body functioning at its best possible level by removing nerve interference and allowing the body to heal itself. So for health, wellness and quality of life, chiropractic is the smart choice for you and your family.